All right, the object of these lectures in Dominican history for you, when I went through as a student, we didn't have it. We had to do it on our own reading, or we got it in refectory and so forth. Uh, so this is being served to you without, with less effort, possibly, than if you had to dig it out yourself. But the objective is to precisely point out to you what is the Dominican order and also primarily St. Dominic. Who was St. Dominic? If you know St. Dominic, you know what the Dominican order is. Or you can work the other way backwards. If you see the Dominican order, study it, know what it is, you can appreciate the man, St. Dominic. To know the rock from whence you were hewn. So, to tell you what we are, or what we're supposed to be, and then what we have been in the course of history. Um, in your novitiate training, you get the Dominican ideal presented to you in different aspects of Dominican spirituality. You have a course in the Constitutions uh, and other phases. Um, you get the ideal presented to you. Now, the advantage of taking historical viewpoint is that an ideal is always found in reality. An ideal is something in the mind or in the spirit, but the ideal, if it's practiced, is always done in concrete circumstances. So Dominican history, you see, shows how the ideal works very well at some times, less well at other times. Um, now, when you're talking about a an ideal, it's always found in concrete circumstances, therefore the Dominican of the 13th century, the Dominican of the 20th century here in the United States, living out an ideal concretely. So you have to study, you see, to study the Dominican ideal historically, not only at the point of its origin, but it's also valuable to study it in the continuing ages, the successive centuries, because the Dominican ideal is influenced always by the times. St. Dominic's concept, was created in the circumstances of the 13th century, the Dominican of the 16th century or the 20th century has to operate this ideal according to the times, and the times are always influencing us. St. Dominic was a man of his times. We 20th century American Dominicans are creatures of our times. And it's a subtle influence that we don't always appreciate. But with a historical background, as you see it going through century after century, the historical mind uh, should help you to evaluate and compare the past with the present. So you don't repeat the mistakes of the past, or learning from the past, you have a guideline for prudent action in the future. Now, again, the Catholic Church is divine as the divine founder, right? Its content, its dogma is divinely revealed. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit is divine. But when you look at the Dominican order, it is not divine, is it? The Dominican order is a purely human institution founded by a human person, St. Dominic, and continued by humans. Just as the church, while it's divine, it is in the hands of humans, the baptized. And the humans never fully reach an ideal and will weaken ideals or corrupt ideals or neglect ideals or ignore ideals. And so the Dominican ideal is more or less fully realized. I think you could say there's never been a perfect Catholic probably never will be a perfect Catholic. And I think you could therefore say, ipso facto, there's never been a perfect Dominican and probably never will be a perfect Dominican. Because human nature never fully implements an ideal for various reasons. So the Dominican ideal more or less realizes certain times more, certain times less. And history can partly explain why. The decay in the late Middle Age, for example, there were outside influences which partly explain why the Dominican order was in need of reform. Uh, yet, when you go through Dominican history, like all history, 
We look at the negative side. We see the failures. And I think a caution, we should have a certain cautionary approach that while we read the bad records, we tend to forget that there were many good people still doing what they were supposed to be doing. Maybe we judge a past age and say the Dominican life was not too fertile at that time. But, on the other hand, since we don't always have the full historical datas, data available, the ideal, the order, might have been far more realized than we can judge now. So, the historical viewpoint towards the Dominican ideal, the Dominican order, uh, is valuable. One of the benefits of the study of human history is that it uh, gives you a common sense, wisdom. Uh, you don't become a dreamer. You see, the artist, the artistic mentality, the literary, the poetic mentality can be off in the clouds, divorced from reality, or the natural scientist measuring quantity, test tubes, and mathematical measurement, and so forth, can be so based on material. But the historian takes the data of human nature and human activities, which is both material, because we live in a concrete world, but also idealistic and spiritual. And uh, history can teach you an awful lot about human nature, history as such. And so you have the same benefit, you see, when you deal with Dominican history. If you have a good grounding in Dominican history, while appreciating the ideal, <clears throat> historical knowledge will check you if you're the unrealistic romantic type, always the rosy glow dreamer. But also, history can check the cynical pessimist who always sees things are totally rotten and wrong and so forth. And when you look back on the record, the Dominican order has had a tremendous impact in history. We've never been always in pristine shape, but always, always the Dominican order has had its influence in the church and in the world. So it's a mixture of good and bad. In some ways, <coughs> You could say that the Dominican ideal can be better understood from the historical approach. Uh, a religious order, when it arises, usually arises because there's a need in the church. And one man or one woman rises to the occasion, forms an organization to meet that need. St. Dominic in the 13th century, St. Ignatius Loyola in the 16th century, and so on. Uh, so, rising in a specific historical period in the peculiar circumstances of that age. And normally a religious institution or even other kind of human institutions are normally perfect in the circumstances in which they arose. Then when historical circumstances and times change, an institution can become antiquated and then has to adapt to new circumstances. Now, it can adapt in such a way that it destroys its original idea, or it can adapt by retaining the essentials. And so the Dominican history, you see, objectively the Dominican ideal as such you first of all have to understand it in the circumstances of its origin. So that to understand the Dominican order, you should know St. Dominic's life and you should know the history of the times.